Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. This is going to be another raid Shadow Legends video. Guys, I'm super excited for this one. I've just leveled up the Epic, who is part of the fusion. Uh, Gerard the Stone. Um, I actually feel like his kit looks really fun, really cool, and he's got great base stats. We'll get into that in a second. Um, but for those who have not seen, they're living under some sort of rock. Uh, I'm also doing a collaboration with World War Doe at the moment. And if you get to level three in World War Doe using my link, and join one of my Hades Minion Clubs. Um, and then you post a screenshot of that in my Discord in the World War Doe section. Then you are in the running to win some raid gems. We're going to pick five winners at the end of the month randomly from those that have joined. So I'll put the link below in a pinned comment and in the description below. But yeah, come and join World War Doe. It's a really fun game. Um, be a cool game to play whilst you're on your Christmas break. Anyway, let's get into this. So Gerard the Stone, as I say, I just got him. Leveled him up. He is good to go. Um, he's a banner lord. He looks like a banner lord. I feel like the banner lord's probably like, or most of them anyway, is is the faction for me that visually just kind of look average. <laughs> most of them are just like, yeah, he just looks like a knight. Okay, cool. Um, job done. So nothing super special. It looks like he could do with some shiny Septimus style kneecaps or something just to spark him up. But anyway, um, there you go. Gerard the Stone. What is cool about this guy is he's got very good base stats. 101 speed. Anything, you know, top 90s over 100 is awesome. 1.4k attack. Usually when you've got a big attack number like that, the defense number's like 800s to 900s and they're really difficult to keep alive this guy's got over a thousand thousand seventy nine actually makes him viable for a lot more content that's what i like about him he's actually he's got stats built to be viable for content which is cool um you know he could quite easily come in and be built to tank a few hits in dungeons um what i've done so far though is i've built him to be a full damage test but we'll get into that in a minute let's go for his skills He's got an A1, which has got a 15% chance to stun for one turn, which is kind of like, okay, I booked him up, 25% gets better, but this is where it's, it's much stronger. So has a 40% booked up 50 to, to, uh, chance to stun if the target's got more than 75% turn meter. And normally, you know, the way you set these guys up, if, if we're talking arena or if we're talking like faction wars or something, you're choosing your enemy and, you know, there's a good chance that you're going to pick the person who's most likely to take a stun. And normally it's probably going to be their speed lead. So, you know, you could take someone out of the game with this ability. So for an A1, I actually think this is pretty strong. Pretty strong A1. I like it. Damage based on attack, um, as is his whole kit. A2, I love. So gives himself increased crit, gives himself increased crit damage buff. For two turns and then attack someone ignores 25 percent defense no matter what uh, and then it will ignore 50 percent defense if they've already buffed and put increased defense on themselves so you know that's a really strong pvp style ability you know if someone's got themselves that increase 50 percent defense uh you know they move from like 3k up to 6k um all of a sudden what you're doing is you're ignoring half of that again so i, I don't know the exact maths of it but i think it ends up basically that you're hitting them like a, a true hit um not true damage but like as if they didn't have that defense buff on at all which should mean if he hits hard it should mean you take someone out because he's got increased crit rate as well you can build him with 70 percent crit rate very similar to what you would do with your cold heart so you know it does mean that you can push the other stats up which is really nice now you do need accuracy to land the stun. I've not built him at the moment to do that. At the moment, I've built him as like a damage test. After that, we'll, we'll kind of uh, just tw twist his gear a little bit. Um, and then he's got this passive. This passive I love. I love these, uh, these kind of immune to passives because it just enables him to have more utility in the game than perhaps you might expect. So immune, immune to fear, true fear, freeze, provoke, sleep, stun. Think about faction war bosses. What do they do? They fear you. They stun you. They provoke you. They um, they freeze you. you know, they, they literally do all of these different things. Three turn cooldown. Generally, those abilities from, um, from faction wars are on like a two or three turn cooldown. So there's a good chance that this guy just rides all of that crap and just keeps going. So really like that on him. 
He could also be, and he probably isn't really made for this, but he could also be a clan boss stun target. If you don't want to run a cleanse, he doesn't need to be cleansed because he'll take the stun, he'll work through his free turns, the stun comes around again, he'll just take it again. He doesn't have an aura that really benefits clan boss at all, but just as like a sideline, because his defense is strong and we know that he's going to have crit rate and crit damage up all the time, he might just hit hard enough for you to be like, you know what, let's bring him in. You know, certainly if you're a mid-game player and you're struggling to deal with that stun, then, you know, perhaps coming in and just riding the stun, it's not a bad option. Also in Doom Tower, the amount of waves that freeze you and all that type of stuff, you know, you've got Torment, Freezes if you go in the arena. There's so many options where this is strong. So I really like this um, just as a sort of general mechanic. And then he's got increased ally resistance in Doom Tower by 50. Now, Doom Tower is tough and the enemies have got much higher accuracy rates, much higher resistance rates than what we're used to in any other content. So throwing a, a resistance aura can help. I'm not going to say, you know, would I run that instead of a speed aura in all battles? Probably not. But then we probably don't have that many of those anyway. So he might just come in and do a job for you in Doom Tower as well for like more resistance. So all in all, although he's single target hits, which I usually I'm kind of a little bit against, I feel like he's got a cool kit. In terms of masteries, now I do have him on my website. You guys can check this out whenever you choose. Um, on my website, I kind of go through and just similar to what I'm doing now, really. I rate champions and different areas of the game. Uh, I rate kind of would I book them and that type of stuff. Um, would I book them? And if I did, where would I like the books to fall? Give them a little bit of a blurb. And then what I do is I put these masteries out there. Now, this set of masteries is, is kind of reasonable on him. You might choose, and this is for PvE, and it's really difficult when you're thinking PvE because if you're going clan boss PvE, I would definitely take Warmaster. But, and, and if I'm not building him to hit really hard for PvE, like in someone like Faction Wars, I might take Warmaster as well. But I think the majority of the time you're going to build him for PvP with Helm Smasher, and I think in that setup, you probably would prefer, um, and, and I think in that setup, you can actually run him Helm Smasher in PvE content as well. So he's a, he's a bit of an odd bod in terms of what masteries I would select. Certainly if I'm nearer end game play, I would go Helm Smasher. If I'm earlier game, I would probably go Warmaster until I've got gear, which is strong enough to make him do damage. But this is what I've built for now. Um, so we've gone damage, damage, damage into Helm Smasher. I've done Blood Shield just so I get a little shield if I kill someone. Um, which I think is reasonable. It is for percentage of his HP, and he doesn't have a great base HP, so you might prefer to go methodical, to be fair. Um, or if you're running like someone like uh, Gurp Tuck, you might go Stoke to Fury. And then we've done a bit of accuracy to get his stun off. I like Evil Eye on most of my champions for Arena, and Laura Steel's good as well. And then because uh, this doesn't do anything for it won't extend a stun, and stuns is only debuff, and it won't help here. So basically Spirit Haste is the only option, but none of these are particularly good. So what have I done then? I built him in Savage Gear. Because he needs only 70% crit rate, I'm able to go crit damage on the gloves pretty comfortably. And then I've basically looked for speed, crit damage, and crit rate on other items. Um, we've gone for a attack chest and attack boots. For now, we're just going to do a damage test. Once we've done a damage test, I'm going to switch him back into speed boots and then we'll get him through other content as well. So let's do the damage test first. I always like to do this for you guys just to kind of see, um, you know, what what, is, what do his multipliers really look like? Uh, this, this, by the way, guys, is what I've been running to, um, to level champions. Yeah. So, you know, we've got the dungeon divers right now. Bad L, single person, taking on the dragon basically by himself. And then everything else is food, which is uh, quite a cool setup. Okay, so we're going to go Bad L's Poison for damage. My normal setup, if you've seen these before. We're going to go Drop Defense and Weaken from my Draco. We're going to do a... Uh, what else do I run? What else do I run? I'm going to... So he already does increase crit rate himself. So I'm going to do an Arbiter increase attack. And I'm going to run Gurp Tuck 
to increase more damage from his ability. And then it's just Gerard to come in. Gerard. Um, right, so there's no, no buffs here in terms of uh, setup. So I think that's as good as we're going to get. And then all we do is increase our attack. Drop their stats. Poison them to make us do more damage. Poison us to make us do more damage. And then in he comes. So I'm going to increase my crit rate first and then take someone on. I guess we're going to take on we'll take on the Horde in first. Let's see what he does with his A2. Oh, my lord. Wow. I know it's single target, but he's just hit for 340k. <laughs> That is hard. Flip it. That is way more than I was expecting to see. That is an absolute nuke right there on his A2. Wow. No one lives through that. Literally nobody on this in this game can survive that. Wow. Um, we just got a debuff block there. See that? He was trying to stun me. Blocked it with his passive. Passive's gone on cooldown. A1 then. Um, it's got a chance to stun. I've got low accuracy, so it might not stun. But I'm going to take someone on with high turn meter. Give me a higher chance. Let's see what the A1 does. 120k. These fellas are going to sit right down. Let's run it through auto. Um, wow. That A2. Man, that A2 hits hard. And you see that he's just taken a blow from, from the crossbowman there, which... Normally, attack-based champions would fall down on. They literally, you would normally fall down on that. That is generally death time. So, we're coming 20k non-crit. Didn't have his crit buff up. Let's get some debuffs going again, guys, for me. 113k without all of the sort of extra damage from Bad L and stuff. Wow, that is incredibly good damage. Pow, 316. Oh, that's kind of like Tormund level of damage. Um, not Tormund. Tervold level of damage right there. 144. Decreased turn meter as well. Wow, this guy. I am loving that. I am absolutely loving that. Way, way, way more damage than I was expecting, guys. You might be realizing that by my tone. Um, way more than I was expecting. 152 just in this sort of general A1. I don't think there's anything from the Drake or from the Dragon that he can block with his passive. We got a good old bad old cleanse out. We should get the big nuke coming in now. Mm, real 20k against the Dragon. Honestly, that's like not far off a cold heart smack. 1.2 mil against the Dragon. That is actually busted good. I'm really impre impressed with that. What I'm going to do, I'm going to throw him in speed boots now so that he's a bit more relevant, but. Damn, that is actually ridiculous. Okay, so I just had a little fiddle, uh, and then I changed his gear, and what have we got? 70% crit rate still, 252 crit damage, 4k attack. Still got like 2.5k defense here, 25, 26k HP. That's probably a bit low. For most builds, you might prefer to go for an HP chest. Most people would need an HP chest here um, instead of... The attack chest that I've got. Generally, I go attack chest now, but just because I can keep people alive much easier than than probably a lot of you can. But you know, something like this rolled up would be better for me. I'll see if I can keep them alive. If not, I'll have to change them about. But twenty, you really want to be minimum thirty k health, I would say, before you know they really start to to come into some trouble. Now, I can't show you Faction Wars. It's not open today. I know that he will be awesome for Faction Wars. Already seeing what he does, I know that he will be awesome for it. So let's have a look at Ice Golem. He's a positive affinity here. Um, and this is my kind of broken team. We're going to run just a much more kind of free-to-play friendly group for these dungeon runs I'm going to show you. So we'll put Seal in there. We know that she's great as a, a kind of you know earlier game. Well, not earlier game, sorry. As a, as a reward champion. I'm going to put Grush in there as well as a reward champion because he's also brilliant just generally in any content. Gerard goes in. Uh, where's Grush? There he is. I'm going to bring Stagnite for a drop defense. And then, um, who else? Who else? 
I guess we just bring someone who's going to speed us up. So standard like Apothecary is always good. So just to make sure he's built. Yeah. So we've kind of got um, speed. We've got some protection. We've got nuke, drop defense, and stuns. That's the idea. Oh, I'm still so excited about that smack. Uh, speed. We drop defense. Let's just slow it down a touch. 91 KA1 there. Still obviously tries to, still actually didn't throw any stuns out there for a change. But we're getting through this wave nice and quick. The second wave I'm a bit worried about, I've got to be honest. Second wave's nasty and I don't have like a, a real answer to it. Drop defense there. Oh, he's going to plow through one. We get stuns off, which makes this now easy. Anyone who hasn't leveled Sill of the Drakes, wow, what are you doing? She is bonkers good. Bonkers good. Hit for 110k there without all of the like crazy buffs that our legendaries were giving us. Drop defense very ni nice and early. And then see that we just dropped his turn meter with uh, uh, a one ability. And he's coming in and slamming for 100k here. I mean, he doesn't do anything special. I, 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 let's be honest here. You know, he hits hard. He doesn't drop any debuffs for me. He doesn't do anything which is going to give us tons of team utility. And that's his biggest weakness. You know, he hits hard. He's got good survivability. He's not going to take freezes off of this um, off of this boss because of his passive, which is awesome. Um. So yeah, there's a number of things which, which he does well, but he's not going to drop like a load of decreased defenses or poisons or any of that type of stuff. So you just have to bear in mind that you only really fit him into your team if you can afford to, if you've got space to. So this will be a pretty clean finish. It's just nice as well that firstly, the, the Ice Golem hits him with weak hits. And secondly, uh, the Ice Golem's not going to be freezing him up, which is often a problem it's often a reason that people die is because they don't get another turn um, obviously we've got you know plenty of support play here we've got seal healing us we've got grush with the leech healing us we've got heals coming from apothecary so he's pretty much just in there out and out for damage um but again no freeze and away we go so ice golem i think he's he's kind of great for a consistent run you know for those that struggle with ice golem in fact, I feel like all of these champions are just great for consistent runs. So that's going to be Ice Golem. We'll move on to have a look at a couple of other areas. Debuff block there as well. You see that, guys? Just literally that passive is, is broken good. So it's worth saying Spider, he offers nothing. He offers nothing, really. Um, literally, He offers literally nothing. <laughs> nothing for this single target. Uh, hitting it's not going to be any good um so yeah just out and out bad bad spider champ finite is similar as well so he doesn't give you any of the debuffs you want um everything he does is single target one hit so he's not going to be offering you anything for finite which you want so for me in terms of dungeons dragon slayer ice golem yes the other two no um which again will represent what i've got on my website there when we start to talk about faction wars i think he's strong especially for those boss fights. Uh, and then when we start to talk about Doom Tower, I mean, there's so many places in Doom Tower, especially on hard, where the waves are just a, an absolute nightmare. But not only the waves, you've got boss fights that are freezing you. Um, you know, you've got a lot of boss mechanics that he will avoid. So let's show off Soraf here as a, a kind of boss fight. So let's get a, get a more reasonable team out so yeah against the frost spider i mean his aura is going to be good um and he's going to hit hard you know all that all that good stuff the waves are pretty simple anyway so we can kind of slam our way through waves but even here like we're up against tormans so a lot of people are going to get frozen against these tormund teams he doesn't he'll resist a bunch of that and he also just hits hard so cool Still's going bonkers. Another wave of Tormund teams. Got a, a Whirling that can freeze. 
So it just brings value. Just brings value where you want it. He's buffered himself a ton. He's not been frozen a single time yet because of that passive. Just really good. Really, really good. Slam, another one down. And I think this is probably the strongest dungeon for him. So I don't have... Actually, I don't have an HP burn here, so I can't even finish the fight. But, um... Which was dumb of me, but... Yeah, obviously... He has a good chance to not be frozen. He's also giving you increased resistance so that, you know, a lot of this stuff here, see all that double resists? You're resisting a bunch of stuff. I literally cannot end this fight because I've got no block revive and I've got no <laughs> HP burn. But you kind of get the point of what he's bringing. If I was doing it in a, a much more sensible way, I would actually bring someone that could help me finish the fight. But, you know, sometimes I'm a bit dumb. Double stun on the spiderlings, that's nice. And again, we're just kind of popping in with damage. So nothing too crazy, but the aura is nice. The fact that he's very, very unlikely to get um, frozen unless he, you know, his passive goes off cooldown at the same time that this comes back, which shouldn't happen in terms of the you know, how fast the, the boss moves. So for Doom Tower, generally strong. For this fight in particular, I think he's actually really good. So let's come out of here. As I say, I literally cannot finish the fight. Um, and then a lot of the waves I think he's going to be good for as well. So Doom Tower, yes. Uh, the last place we want to show, I guess, is Arena. Because I think this is probably really what his kit was made for. Doom Tower and Arena. Um, obviously, we're on a weak source page like normal. Oh, we actually found a proper page of people. It's good. Yeah, okay. And what you'd want to be doing in the arena, now obviously, uh, let's try and find a Tormund team. Or someone who's going to fear us, maybe. Shall... If you're wondering where all my gems go from Plarium, here it is. Okay, we've got a Tormund team. We've got so many fears, we've got so many freezes. This is going to be a strong team anyway. Um, so what do we do? We bring in these boys. So they're actually pretty quick. If I speed up here, we've got a good chance of being frozen across the board. Debuff blocked. See that? So he should be frozen right now. Oh no, he's still going. And then we come in, we... I'm going to take out the person who's got high um, turn meter. So we've got three with high turn meter here. And what I want to do is... Uh, no, turn meter means no, no, nothing here. It's on his A1. So I'm just going to take out one of them. Maybe I'll just take out Arb so they don't get a... Oh, 177k. Very nice. Okay, so the, the um, revive's gone. I feel like even when his passive is on cooldown, he still doesn't seem to get frozen. I don't think I've seen him frozen yet. Now, I don't know if that's a bug or what, but I, I literally have not seen him frozen yet. All right, so A1 here. Um, if they're over 75% turn meter, we've got enhanced chances. None of them are doing that. So I've got to be careful that I don't end up just straight out killing myself. I guess probably Marta's the person who's likely to have the, the weakest comeback hit. Oh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because he's popped her. Popped her with a one shot. Um, that is nice. That is nice. Oh, he's, he's taking hits. I know they weren't big hits, but still. That's another thing that he's doing here. Um, we've got decreased defense up here. Maybe we can pop this guy as well. We'll see. Oh, not quite. But we've got the stun off. So stun's gone on. Which means he's gonna not take his turn. Try to get our stuns off ourselves. Stuns off here as well. We know that he's definitely dead, so we're gonna try and pop the Tormund. Of course we will. 85k. Damn, this guy hits well. This guy hits well. I like his kit. I think it's fun. Um, I'm usually not a fan. Oh, that's good as well. 32 against a defensive champ. I'm usually not a fan of the people that can't place. Um, don't, don't do multi-hits. Um, you know, you've got people like Errol in the game, stuff like that. They they just generally are a bit of a 
um, hindrance to you in the arena. But I feel like this guy's just got some good resourcefulness. He's not going to be top tier. You're not going to see him in plat arena, but um, he, he hits well. So we could fight any of these. I'm going to try and get rid of the stun chance first. 110. See you later. Down she goes. Gone for a nap. There goes the resurrect. Um, we can just drop a bit of turn meter here. Do a bit of damage. Single target. Try and drop speed. Nice hit. Take him out of the game. Now we're going to go A1 here. Maybe get a stun. Don't need a stun when you hit for 93k. Um, and that is job done. So look, guys. Sherard. It feels like all the champions I've tested so far that are, no, that are new champions are like good quality. Good quality additions to the game. And this guy is no different to that. So there you go, guys. You've seen him in action. Um, Would be brilliant for you in Faction Wars, Doom Tower. Maybe some uh, dungeons like... 130k there. Maybe some dungeons like um, Dragon and perhaps Ice Golem. And certainly Faction Wars in the arena. Really cool champ. Love his kits. Uh, I think they've done a good job in this one, guys. So uh, is he better than Pixniel? Well, I don't know if he is on his own. But if you start to look at the other champions that are in the mix there, I feel like the rares and epics that you can add to your pool feel stronger than Pixniel as a one-off for me. Um, but anyway, that's why I'm not fusing her. I'm going to keep going with these epics. And yeah, hopefully you'll see a few more guides in the next few days. Um, I've been Hell Hades. I'll catch you in another video soon.